Hello, everyone, and how are all of you doing? We are back. We are back for another episode of Rob's Real and Ridiculous Podcast. It is episode number 48. 48, Man Cave Studios, Valley of the Sun. And how are all of you doing? It's actually still a little chilly out here in Arizona, believe it or not. Um, but how about this first week of January as we enter to, into the new year? How was your week? How are you doing? How are you feeling? We know COVID is running rampant. I know in this state, apparently we are the hottest state uh, in the entire world from what, what, what has been reported, which is really crazy. Uh, hospitals are just you know full to capacity, which is unfortunate. So the, as I say every week, just do the right things, wear the mask, um, stay distanced and go to places that that you need to go uh, and aren't crowded but let's just talk real quick before we get to our guest this week about the uh, elephant in the room if you will what a complete ugly disaster and so unfortunate happening this past week on Wednesday that was an absolute crap show that was I don't even know how to describe how bad that was. And, and I did not know what I was watching on TV. It was like something from a movie. It was so surreal to see these people climbing the walls of the Capitol and coming in prepared with knee pads and jumping on scaffolds and breaking through the door and just flat out scaring the crap out of people. Uh, we lost a young woman who I believe was an ex-veteran. We also lost a police officer who was hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. Seemed to be uh, okay in, in the sense that he didn't just, you know, pass pass away right there. But I guess when he got back to the precinct, he died. So unfortunate. My thoughts and prayers go out to all of those that were affected. Um, you know, people, this is, you know, this is a complete wake-up call. That was something that we should never ever ever witness in our lives should never have had to witness and should never ever witness again uh, we need to stay unified we are called the united states for a reason we need to stick together and sometimes things just don't go the way we want them regardless of what side of the fence you're on that's not the way to handle it it's not the way to handle it you need to just kind of move on do what you can to get through it that is not the way to handle it. That is the exact opposite. Let's stay unified. Let's stay tight. We need to all stand up and speak up for unity uh, in this great country we live in. Let's hope the fences start mending in two weeks. Let's hope they start mending. Those are my early thoughts, my opening thoughts on that. But let's go to this week's guest who is waiting in the green room. We're going to go to Milton Campus. Milton, welcome to the show. Hey, man, thank you. Nice to meet you, Rob. You too. You too. Thanks for joining. How are uh, how are things down there? And uh, you're in Coral Springs, right? Coral Springs, Florida. Uh, uh, except for the world ending, I mean, everything is great. You know. <laughs> is it that the truth? <laughs> you know, I really I, don't. I don't get into politics too much on my shows. I don't know about you. I know yours is pretty much focused on zero. what you do. That's how I am. Yeah. But when things like this happen, I just you just have to say. What the heck was that, right? Yeah, uh, you know, I, uh, I have a, a rule. I say no politics, no religion. Uh, I Same. That, uh, carried that over from, uh, from uh, well, actually family gathering. Right, that's the truth. A little out of here. I, I shouldn't say that. The women in our family yeah. have forced the men into no politics, no religion. Let me give them their props. Yeah. Uh, but we, uh, yeah, I've carried that over to the podcast. I just think it's, it's bad for business. No, listen, for my podcast, at least, you know, jujitsu dummies, Nobody wants to hear us talking about politics. It, no. you know, they, they tune in to talk about jujitsu and, and, you know, get a little advice and, and have some fun. So, I, you know, I, my personal views, who cares? At same here. Day, Mine is, as today, well. I woke up today, same as normal, went to jujitsu, same as normal on a Saturday. Yep. Uh, that, the events there, as, as sad as they were, did not affect my day-to-day -day here. 
And I think if more people realize that, they might calm down a little bit. But that's a, that's all I'll say about politics. Well, well guess what? And I'm and I'm totally aligned with you. You know, I was just saying that to my wife this morning at the gym, and I try to tell my mom the same thing. I said, "Mom, you can't change anything. You know, stay yeah. off the news. We can control what goes on in our world." To your point. Mm. Get up, yeah. go to the gym, you know, uh, take care of your family, yeah. make sure your friends and family are good. And that's it. That's all yeah. we can do. We can't change yeah. anything anyway. You know, the only Get thing that's that's affected me that's come out of Washington is is the checks that they've been sending, you know, right. Which, uh, the stimulus again, checks. getting into that, you know, that, yep. that's the only yep. effect that they've touched my life. That's the only way they've touched my life and my family's life. Yep. So, you know, I, hear I, you. I try not to, I, you know, everyone has an opinion, but uh, for me, it's, uh, yeah. you know, when I'm doing my podcast, it's, we want to talk about jujitsu. We want to give advice to the youngsters. We want to give advice to uh, people that might be having a little bit of trouble. We have a foundation. We've got lots of, yeah, we'll go, yeah, a lot we'll of go. giveaways and we donate money and stuff I like love that. it. We're going to yeah. get it. We're going to get into that too, okay. which is fantastic. I love it. I've watched quite a yeah. few of episodes. I thank really you, like you. your show. I like the setting. I like everything about it. It's, it's really is it, awesome. I really thank mean you. that. But um, yeah. And so you're how far are you away from sunrise? You're are you about like 30 minutes away? Yeah, I was sunrise, checking that I, out, I actually, right? yeah, I'm in Coral Springs. Uh, my my day job is actually in plantation, which was above yep. sunrise. Yeah, that's Basically, for those who don't know, that's just west of Fort Lauderdale. It's basically like a yeah. suburb. You could write yeah. Fort Lauderdale on your mail if you live in Plantation or Sunrise yeah. and still get it. Put it yeah. that way. Uh, that's where my day job is, although I've been working from home for the last year since the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. So me too. So I bring it up because I work for American Express. Okay. So we have a location in Sunrise. Yeah, yeah. So not I, too far away. It takes yeah. me a half hour to get to work in the morning with a little bit of traffic. Yeah, would fly in a lottery deal, but the same as you ever, well, since March. So since March, we've been working from home, and it's going to continue yeah. at least into midsummer. Yeah. So it's yeah, an ad right. how are you adjusting to that? Uh, you know, I uh, I moved to Florida when I was 25. I'm 47 now. Yeah, because yeah, you're, you know, you're from New York, right? I'm from Long Island originally. Long Island. Yeah, you know, it, it comes out now to come out. As oh, soon as dude. I say Long Island, yeah. it's over. <laughs> dude, I, when I watched a couple of your shows, I said that to my wife. I said, he's definitely from back east, New York. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Boston. Yeah. Mine comes out sometimes. Or if I'm yeah. uh, having a few extra drinks, the accent starts <laughs> popping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I moved here when I was 25. I, I came to work. I was supposed to go back. It was supposed to be about a six month stint. I was a stockbroker at the time. Yeah. Another life. And yeah. I came down to raise money for a company. And I, my sister moved down a month later. I fell in love with it. I didn't want to go back. The business was going well. I wound up staying. And then my parents moved down about it. They put their house for sale. They said, well, we were supposed to retire to Florida. I don't know yeah. what you guys are doing down there, but I guess we'll join you. Yeah. And, uh, and they moved down. They put the house for sale, and they were down here a year later. So my whole That's... family's here. I have a daughter that uh, that was in New York as well with her okay. mom. You know, uh, just, yeah. uh, you know yep. we, uh, when we uh, broke up, uh, you know. Yeah, went your separate never ways. Never married, yep. but when we broke up, uh, I moved. Again, I was supposed to go back. Didn't expect it, but uh, it was a good reason <laughs> to get out of New yeah. York. Yeah. Too much fighting. We separated and wound up becoming better friends That's you know, good. in that separation. So my daughter was still there. She's 27 now. Now she lives in Virginia, but uh, that was the only hard thing. But she used to come down a ton. We'd fly her yeah. in, you know, get her on a plane at five years old. And uh, so, uh, so fell in love with Florida and uh, it's, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a great experience down here. And, you know, lo and behold, again, you know, 22 years later, I'm, you know, uh, in the jujitsu community down here doing yeah, the you podcast. Are. Hardcore, and, uh, which is awesome. Yeah. 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 You know, same here. So I'm from Boston. So right next door, obviously, and rival mm -hmm. sports cities, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, we've been out here. I've been out here since 82. I'm 57. What did you say? You're 47 now? 47. Yeah, so I got 10 on you. But uh, we moved out, and my mom's three sisters and my, and my nana at the time had moved out one by one. So there's like 50 of us out here in Phoenix. Yeah. So um, I, I love – I would never change the way I grew up, mm -hmm. you know, but I would never go back. <laughs> I, I love I, the I, warm I, weather, brother. <laughs> I'd say the same thing. You know, there's a there's a lot that I left behind. A lot of friends. And sure. I, you know, again, I moved. I didn't expect to stay. Yeah. And when I stayed, you know, uh, lost some contact with some friends. But my my best friends, I you know, with you know, moved down here, and then you discover Facebook. At that time, it was MySpace, but so yep. you know, Facebook came about, and the internet was growing. And now it's just like you could stay in touch with the, you know people you went to kindergarten with. So isn't that uh, the I, truth? Know, to, 
Yeah, I get to, you know, keep in touch with them that way. And, and, the, and, you know, the people that make an effort, I actually see them. I got married last year, went on a cruise. One of my best friends from New York came on the cruise with his family, oh, nice. and wife and kids. So, so yeah, you know, it's just a different way of keeping in touch, but we get to keep in touch. Isn't that so. great that we're able to do that in this day and age? You know, you've got the, the whole negative side, obviously, of social media, right? And then you get the good yeah. parts where you can communicate. And I, I hadn't seen my aunt but my, on my dad's side. My aunt lives back in New Hampshire, my cousin's. But when they came out here two years ago for my dad's 80th, it's like I we didn't miss a beat because of you see the updated pictures, you know what the kid, you know, you know what everybody looks like to your point. Yeah, yeah. it's funny because my, my <laughs> and, and to my uh, uh, to my shame, I should probably <laughs> say my parents are about 40 minutes away. They live up in Wellington. Yeah. And uh, Wellington, Florida. And. You know, we always see each other on the, on the holidays, the special events. You know, my, I'll see her on, yep. uh, we're seeing her on Sunday. It's my mom's birthday on the 12th. So we're going to get together this Sunday. Uh, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to change that about myself is just seeing them only when there's something special going on. I trying gotcha. to drop by, invite them down, things like that. But it's funny, you know, you wind up talking so much on Facebook. It's like, oh, have you spoken to your mother? Yeah, we yeah. commented to each other on Facebook today. Yeah. It's just second nature to us. You know, my yeah. dad's finally texting now. Oh, he, nice. He was, he was anti-texting, 75, <laughs> anti-texting. Yeah. But he had to pay like a, a a nickel or a dime every time he sent the text, so he just wouldn't text. <laughs> my my so, my dad my dad still has the damn flip phone. It's crazy, and my, uh, my, my parents too. are yeah. so into their iPhones now. Which yeah, is good my mom my mom is. In touch, you know? It is. You can do the FaceTime thing, and yeah. if you don't get to see him on a regular basis, yeah, it's fantastic. How is it out there in AZ with the whole pandemic? I mean, you know, like down here in Florida, we never really. Uh, I can't say we ever really shut down Same like the here. rest of the country. Uh, I'll, I'll say that I, I went to train jujitsu like normal today. Yep. I, 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 I hurt my knee the day before I went into the, into uh, quarantine in, yeah. in March. Okay. So uh, I wound up being just a sprain of my ACL and my MCL. So I had to stay out of the gym anyway. Okay. So day, Sunday training before I was going into Monday quarantine where I was not going to work, I was going to be working from the house. Yeah. I actually, that happened and I just didn't go back till probably about two, three months ago. And even then it was just like maybe four or five times a month. It wasn't a lot of training. Now I'm yeah. back to my regular training. Yep. But for the most part, yes, you know, restaurants and movie theaters and all that stuff kind of, you know, some of them had to shut down. Sure. That initial part where they really closed us down after that, after a few months, it's other than wearing the masks Same. and places not being as crowded. Same. People are people are just, you know, doing their normal thing. Is that the same out there? Brother, the same thing here, you know, and I was gonna ask you, so I'm glad you asked me. And I said that and I haven't been to te I haven't been in Texas, but from what I hear, um, Texas is the same. So Arizona, Texas, and Florida, we've all yeah. been kind of operating on the same kind of, you know protocol where it's mm. it's been open and we've shut i think we shut down for like that small two-week period in may when all that you know the other craziness yeah. was going on and the pandemic was rising but they quickly opened up and then um as far as the gym goes um i train at a mountainside i don't know if you're familiar with mountainside fitness i think it's pretty much no. west, west coast but um and i have a little home gym here which was good so when they did shut down i had some place to tr to work out but um they fought, they really fought hard to get the gyms reopened here because, yeah. and you know this, you know, you're, you're, you know, especially based on what you do in your sport, and there's a lot of mental, uh, there's a mental part of it that goes into it. You know, it is at times all about fitness, but it's also t at times mental well being, right? Yeah. I always uh, say I mean, mentally strong. I always open up my podcast, stay mentally strong, right? Yeah. And then do any activity, you know, we're gym rats, yeah. you know, but, um, you got, you, you know, got to, to keep your sanity, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, jujitsu and martial arts, I know from the inside out, we, we know how much it helps, especially with PTSD. Yeah. You see these, uh, these, this guy, this little logo above my shoulders. Yeah. Here, we defy foundation. <laughs> uh, I work with them. Uh, we have our own foundation that we do some stuff, but we work with, we defy, which is a military organization and they do scholarships to combat, wounded veterans oh awesome so, you know i'm literally like the, one of the owners uh one of the shouldn't say the owners one of the foundation founders actually lost three limbs wow in, uh overseas uh during his service and actually trains jiu-jitsu so he's got one arm 
uh, you know, he's missing uh, three limbs and he does jujitsu and he helped start that foundation. So That's uh, amazing. we know from this side and there's a lot of, and not just the podcast, but in our community, there are tons and tons of organizations that are doing things for veterans because of the health benefits, the mental benefits of jujitsu. Yep. You know, it's, uh, I put it, I tell my wife, you want to argue with me? Wait till I come home from jujitsu. <laughs> yeah. When my I've let go of everything that's on my shoulders in my head for that day. And I come home just completely like level headed and ready to have a conversation. Yeah. And I can imagine what it does, to, you know, for somebody with PTSD. I mean, I, I talk to these guys, I hear the stories, sure. you know, working out, lifting weights that, yeah. uh, you know, runners sometimes call it that runner's high. You get into that. The endorphins. Zone, right? Yeah. Well, for jujitsu, I mean, we're literally, jujitsu is unique in the martial arts you know, realm yep. because we train hard. We, we, uh, we spar or what we call roll yep. every class. Wow. It is not like some of the other martial arts where you'll do a lot of drilling, which I take yep. nothing away from them, yeah. but they might not ever, they might not get hit in the face that day. Yeah, okay. um, today I was rolling with somebody. They're trying to choke me. I'm trying to, you know, take their arm off, uh, you know, in the most respectful right. <laughs> way that uh, that i could you know we're not literally trying to break it but sure. we are we're trying to kill each other quote unquote kill yeah. each other uh or you know break a limb break a break a joint and there's this release that you get from going that far into battle you know short of being in the military i was not in the military myself i did not serve yep, the same respect for those guys me too me too but we get to battle you know, again, I'm doing air quotes for if anybody's yeah. just listening to the sound. Yeah, no, we'll be doing YouTube too. We get to too. battle to the death, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then we tap and then we hug and we slap and we do, and we might, you know, roll again. Usually yeah. our roll is about six minutes. So uh, there's this unique release. Uh, I, I worked out, I've been working out since I was like 16 years old Yep. Uh, with weights. And I didn't discover jujitsu until I was in my 40s. Uh, you know, i wow. boxing fan, UFC fan. Yeah. Uh, always, uh, let me get in better shape before I get on the mat. Yeah. And did a little Muay Thai, but I didn't start till a, a very much an older age, but I've, I know the high that I got from working out. This is another level. Another this level. This is another yeah. level that I never experienced when like I'm literally laying on my back completely out of breath. Yep. And you know, I just choked somebody out and they had to tap and I'm, st I'm exhausted and my arms are hurt and I, yeah. and I got a slap and bump and we got another three minutes to roll and we got to do it again. And now he's probably going to kick my ass. Yeah. So it, it, there's this unique uniqueness to jujitsu that a lot of the other martial arts don't have. So, uh, we're, we're I, I tell you all the time, we're a little bougie. Yeah. We know that about <laughs> like our martial that. art that, okay, you can come, we're going to do some drilling and yeah. then we're going to try to choke each other. Yeah. A lot of other martial arts aren't doing that, at least in their normal classes. We're talking about from kids to adults. I'm talking four-year-old to the oldest. I'm one of the older guys in my gym at 47. Wow. We roll yeah. and fight no matter the age, every single training class. Wow. So that's unique. And again, you get that, that release. Uh, it's again, amazing. You know, so yeah, I can, I mean, I can only imagine on your end. Yeah. Yeah. Same for me with the weight training and everything else. It's, it's funny though. I thought about this the other day when I knew what we we're going to talk today. I, um, I did jujitsu for like a solid two weeks. I'll never forget it. It just came to mind the other day because um, I played Little League and I played hockey. Hockey was my primary sport growing mm -hmm. up and uh, played at some, some decent levels. You know, I didn't, didn't make it uh, to the pros or anything, but that was my sport. Um, but I always loved a lot of other sports. And so with, through Little League, my coach was teaching a jujitsu class. And I can't tell you, Milton, why I dropped out. <laughs> I did it for two weeks and then it, then it dropped out. Um, but for me personally, I, I love this sport. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I love UFC. Uh, I love everything, all MMA. Um, I, you got to be you got to be a tough bastard to do what these guys do and what you guys do period yeah. you know in all honesty i i was watching i know we'll get into it too a little bit um cuz i know you had uh had some good guests on um with your uh, the the bare knuckle boxing so i had to take a look at yeah jim somebody. ailers we oh, had him on. damn man i'll yeah. tell you that's that's some tough stuff there, brother. That, yeah, that's some yeah. tough stuff. I mean, uh, Jim, uh, Jim was a uh, Jim, yeah. uh, an MMA fighter. He was in the UFC. He I do remember him in there after I saw him, you know? Yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a tough dude, man. And, wow. uh, you know, the one thing that I took away from that interview with him, he actually came to my gym 
Uh, again, you know, our world is, is very unique. There are a lot of uh, people that train, obviously. Uh, there are a lot of women that train, which goes kind of unrecognized. Again, you know, we see, well, now with, you know, with the UFC, you see, you see that there have been women doing this for a really long time. Oh, yeah, it's but been Jim's great. Life, and uh, one of our female, uh, you know, uh, practitioners at my gym went to train at Jim's, uh, uh, at Jim's Ehlers Martial Arts uh, down here in Pembroke Pines, yeah. went to train with the wife, and uh, she's new to the sport. I believe she's still a white belt. And one of our blue belts went to train, and she, she invited her over. And Jim said, you know, I'll, hey, listen, I'll go with you. It's, uh, you know, he knew of, uh, he trains at another fight sports location. So he's like, hey, I'll go with you. Yeah. Turns out he's, like, oh, he's like, oh, God, I train with your coach. So he came in and he, he was, you know, very giving of, of information and, and great to roll with. And I said, hey, you know, he was just that guy that you saw in those bare knuckle fights trying yeah. to take people, someone, knock somebody's block off yeah. was the sweetest guy. Yeah, and I, just, I, I was. He was so approachable. I said, "Hey, you know, I do a podcast. Love to have you on." He's like, I'm "Done. Let's do it." A couple of weeks later, we had him on, and then when he was on the podcast, he's all smiles the whole time, man. Yeah, he was. Like, I watched it. I watched most of it. He yeah, was just. He, he was chill. I mean, he's kind. Of, you see, kind of soft spoken too, right? Yeah, yeah, very yeah. soft spoken. Yeah. You know, he's a teacher by trade. He went to school to be a teacher. He's an educator. It's amazing. And you know, he owns his own gym now, and he, you know, he's in the uh, you know bare knuckle fighting championship. And I'm just sitting, I'm looking at him on the screen again. I, I, tr I did get to roll with him, which was awesome. Yeah. But I tr I'm looking at him on the screen and I don't think there was a moment that he didn't have a smile on his face when he was answering a question. And like he's it's very soft spoken. Yeah. And that's, that's a, that's really funny that we, we, we kind of always talk about it on the podcast. You, if I lined up 10 of my training partners right here in this room right now, yeah. and I put them all on camera, or if I took five of my training partners and five people off the street and just lined them up here, you would not be able to pick out who's who, who trains and who doesn't. The only thing that might give away are guys that have cauliflower ear. Other oh, yeah, that, right. Yep. Would, I train with real estate agents. I train with accountants. I, wow. you know, I'm, a, I'm in the marketing game. I'm the marketing exec by day. Yeah. Uh, We've got people, uh, you know, students, uh, kids going to college. Uh, we've got a, a, pharma, a, a pharmacist. <laughs> you know, you would never expect these guys yeah. to train. And it's, it's something that's unique to, I think, martial arts in general is you really can't tell who trains and who doesn't. But once you start training, you're very careful. You're, you're, yeah. You notice it more and you're very careful when, you know, if you ever get into a confrontation out in the street, you just don't know what the other guy knows. You don't. But, that's but true. Yeah, Jim was a Jim was is a good example of that. If you if you didn't see his ears and you just met him on the street, he's the sweetest guy. Yeah, he's so soft spoken. You would never say like, "Hey, oh my God, watch out for that guy. He can he can probably kill you." Yeah. So um, you and know, you very, would uh, and and you would know better than anyone else. You would say probably generally in that in that uh, sport, right? Guys are pretty, for the most part, you've, you've probably got some people that, you know, there's a few out there. Obviously, have their uh, their attitude and swag, right? But they're all pretty humble. Yeah. We, you said something before, like you, you mentioned when you, um, you said you did jujitsu for two weeks and it yeah. made me think about something. I tell everybody and, and hats off to you for, for even getting in there. A lot of yeah. people, you know, they get nervous, to even try you either love for jujitsu. I'll speak about jujitsu. Yeah. I've done some other martial arts for a very short, short amount of time. Yeah. Jujitsu is the one thing and I've been training going on seven years. You either love jujitsu or you hate jujitsu. Okay. There is no, there is no in between in this sport. Gotcha. You either want to train or you don't want to train. There's no in between. And I say that to say, you're talking about having some. I am two thirty five right now, two hundred thirty five pounds. Yeah. One of the larger people in my school. To have a two hundred and thirty five pound man on top of somebody who decides to come once a week or every couple it's not like going to the gym where you could just jump on the bike or get on the treadmill right i said before you're going to be fighting yeah and although i would, would know to take it easy and bring my level down to match my opponent's level when we're training it's yep. not always like we're ah! right too crazy you know, yeah there's no in between with jujitsu you either do it or you don't guys yeah. that come every once in a while start for you know a month every three months they come back they just never last. Yeah, it's just not, not yeah. hats off to them for trying. I get yeah. it, trying to get in shape, but it's not like being able to go back to the gym. Let me go get back in shape You're right. it's you against you. Yep. This is you against other people. Yeah. But going to, to, to really address your question about, you know, that they're very humble. It also makes you leave your, you know, your ego at the door. Yeah. You're about, I get my ass kicked on the regular. Yeah, I do. I hand out a lot of ass kickings. I could yeah. say, you know, there is 
Uh, we say in my gym for every level, there's another level. I'm yeah. a purple belt. It's white, yeah, nice. blue, purple, brown, black, and then coral, like reds and corals. Yep. I can probably kick most of the, you know, the, the asses of most of the, the guys at my level and below. Yep. And, and look, and there's a couple of blue belts that come in every once in a while that, that kick my ass, these strong young guys. So I, I take a beating once in a while too. Yeah. Uh, you go above me, but you know, higher purples, guys that have been doing it longer, brown and black. I get my ass kicked on the regular, but you know, shit rolls downhill basically. So sure. <laughs> you know, again, for every level, there's another level. So, you know, we all, you, in order to be able to do that, you have to leave your ego at the door because if you're somebody that I trained with a guy one time, I, I submitted him, he got up, he took his mouthpiece out and he threw it across the gym and the coach was like, what the, what is, yeah. he got upset because I kept on catching him with the same submission ah. and, and, and that's something that I do sometimes if I get a guy that he lets me get him. I keep on doing it until he figures it out. Figure it he out, right. Figure out the counter or how he's supposed to react. He might get upset with that, but in my mind, I'm helping him because I'm just going to keep on getting that same submission until you start figuring out whether you figure it out in that class or you go home and start looking on YouTube for the counter. Yeah. I'm going to keep on doing it because you're letting me do it. Gotcha. So this, uh, this individual kind of, you know, he just got upset about that. So he, he stopped training jujitsu because he didn't know how to leave his ego at the door and, yeah, and it, it leaves go. people out. So a guy like Jim, uh, you know, Jim Allers, he is somebody who has learned that early on. And there's also, there is another part of it that's probably ego driven Yeah, is you, you, you need to check your ego at the door because you also might hurt somebody that you might get hurt if you go in there trying to be all tough. That makes sense. But there's a quiet confidence, I call it, that goes into when I walk into a restaurant, a room, I'm not walking in with my head held high like I'm going to kick everybody's ass. Right. But the comfort of being able to walk into that room knowing that I could take care of myself. Absolutely. A, I call it the quiet confidence. We see it in kids. Yeah. Their confidence changes. Their grades go up. They don't want to disappoint their coach. There's this whole new life that they start to lead. They want to help kids. They see a bully. They, they, they you know, kind of might jump into that fray or might say, hey, hey, stop. Uh, a lot of the kids, parents don't tell, don't talk about jujitsu at school. You don't want the bully to come after you. But those kids are, are the ones that wind up, you know, not being bullied. We're not teaching them to be monsters. We're teaching them to, you know, the to values defend of defend themselves. Oh, yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, you know, again, the ego's left at the door. A guy like Jim, he's not worried about somebody walking down. Like he's not a guy that's got to cross to the other side of the street when he sees some tough guy coming. Yeah. I'm going to, like me, I think I'm going to smile at that guy and say, how you doing? And I'm going to keep on walking where somebody else might be like, well, go on the other side of the street. That guy looks yeah. tough. He looks scary. That's that quiet confidence that goes along with yeah. it. And I'm not saying that I could stop a bullet. I'm not saying that I, yeah. I, you know, I can kick everyone's ass, but I'm confident that I could take care of myself. Yeah. That's part of what martial arts and jujitsu specifically has taught me. And that's why you see a guy like Jim is just all smiles. Yeah. You know, he's just all smiles. He's just like, yeah, happy go lucky, man. Just loves life. Gets loves to do life. what he loves. Gets to go into the gym and show people out and then go have, you know, a, a nice Sunday with his family. So, yeah, no, I yeah. love it. You know, and there's something to be said for that because I don't know, I, I also call it kind of a back east thing too, right? You kind of born to have that. You just are. I mean, shit, yeah. I, I didn't do, I don't do anything what you do. I can definitely hold my own um, when I need to. And I don't walk across the other side of the street to your point, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm, you know, you sound like you're as social as all hell like I am. So yeah. I'll be the first one to say hi to anybody, grocery store, gym or whatever. But um, there's something to be said for that. I feel like, you know, given kids, like these younger kids, I had somebody on a few weeks back uh, who opened up a boxing school and it was training and mm -hmm. it basically, it was also doing the same thing that you're doing. You're giving some of these younger kids confidence. Some mm -hmm. of these uh, people he was training for boxing was to give them confidence, and it was mm -hmm. to help with mental health. So you got the physical aspect, like you said, knowing that, hey, look, I'm not looking for trouble. But if yeah. trouble comes my way, I can defend myself. Plus, this day and age, we got to defend our family. You know, I've yeah. got a wife yeah. and, and two girls. Uh, and so I guess it's like, you know, at least – you know, you see some people, they probably can't do much to help their family out, just in general, right? I, I, I definitely agree with, with that yeah. statement. And again, you know, I, I, I preach the word of jujitsu. I tell yeah, everybody. Yeah, it's awesome. I've got the tattoo. I've got the, I'm always in a shirt. My yeah, wife says jujitsu looks <laughs> like it threw up on me. But I love talking about it. I love doing it. Um, again, yeah. you know, there, I have, we, we say uh, uh, sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. 
Today I was the hammer. Last week I was the nail. <laughs> yeah. I got my ass handed to me by some high level guys. And, and I was just like, you know, you walk out of there going, what am I doing? 47. I'm getting yeah. up by these guys half my age. And then I go in today and, and I have a great day. We do some great drills and had some great training, you know, uh, some great roles. We call yeah. it you know, sparring is rolling. So I had some, some great sparring. My wife, my wife does, um, does kickboxing at a place called Raw, Kick, Raw Kickboxing down here in, uh, in, in South Florida. Okay. And, uh, she she gets it now. She didn't always do it. We we were together. I was doing jujitsu. She f- was looking around for something to do. She tried to you know ch- yoga and a regular gym. And she fell in love with uh, with kickboxing. And she's not in there sparring. Yeah. But she gets it now. She she know like, I, I what are you doing this weekend, babe? She's like, you already know. I'm going <laughs> to kickboxing on Saturday and Sunday. I'm going in the morning to the morning classes. And I think we both come away from those like just cleansed of the week. Yeah. She, definitely understands now my addiction and when I first started jujitsu uh, it was a family friend so I started to help I did some like I never paid a dime I did everything in trade I was helping him with his marketing he taught me jujitsu I was there five days a week two hours a day on Saturdays day number six we'd go to another gym to an open mat I was addicted she used to t- some days he was he was in law enforcement so he'd say I'm on a stakeout uh, he was a uh, 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 internal affairs for the uh, Homeland Security. Okay. So he was on a stakeout. He'd be staking out off, uh, you know, other agents, other yeah. officers. And sometimes he'd call and say, hey, you got you to gotta open the gym for me. And some, you know, like maybe his wife couldn't open it, but he'd be like, listen, she doesn't train, but she's going to open the doors. You got to do the classes. Can you yeah. be there? So I might be there from five to do the kids' classes and then six, seven, all the way up to nine to do the adults' classes. Wow. And my wife used to tell me, she's like, really three hours, you know, four hours, five hours, sometimes go there early, help clean up. And I think I don't do it that much anymore. Yeah. But she totally understands. I get the addiction. I see you're, what you're, you do, yeah. the way it makes you feel. I, I see that handsome devil behind you. Is that you back there? It is on the wall back you, in you, the day. Yeah, I did. I, uh, yeah, I did bodybuilding. I did powerlifting for quite a few years. I did competitive bodybuilding all the way through, Oh, God, like the early 90s, 92, 93, I stopped, um, and I still train. Um, yeah. But as far as competing goes, that that was kind of it. I, you know, I trained all the way up to, uh, up to uh, going into a national show. And then it was kind of one of those things that growing up as a young kid, seeing the, the magazine covers, right? Yeah. Rig, no one knows, guys. Muscle and fitness. When I was growing up, muscle and fitness, that's what it was. I'm like, God, I love the way that is. And I always worked out in the basement at home and always, and when I had a passion too for boxing and, and, and now UFC and MMA and all of it is I always had an Everlast heavy bag hanging from the rafters in the basement, had a speed bag, which I can still hit, which is kind of cool when I go to the gym. But I said, I want to get into this. And, um, and so I just happened to, uh, keep training. When I moved out here, I met a guy that uh, owned a gym out here, Rafino's gym. We became best friends. He's from Jersey, actually. Mm-hmm. So, um, and we connected and, uh, and I learned everything from him and I did really well. And it was, a, it was such a, you know, talking about highs, right? It was such a high to walk out there on stage, knowing you look the way you do and you got to put everything into it as you do every day, right? Or to yeah. win a match. But the diet of 12 weeks, the commitment it goes with all of that, right? It's all about discipline yeah. and mental. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and then again, you know, we go back to that. Uh, I'll use like that runner high expression, right? The runner I, high. I yeah. feel I, I, I leave when I leave, when I get in my car and I'm leaving a, a training session, there's probably no better time in my day where I, I'm not thinking about problems and bills and we're moving again like yeah i'm not even thinking about that stuff it's like you're almost my mind is almost blank yeah you know there's at least a few minutes of that you know and uh it's just again it's it's an experience that everyone should have and it, it doesn't have to be jujitsu like i said my wife found kickboxing kickboxing yeah talk about weightlifting i know that for me i've done some of those things i did a wrestled a little bit in high school played a little bit of football i wasn't any good at this stuff yeah I played baseball so- soccer was my game i wish i would have stuck out with that when, yeah when I, was, I, I saw that was big on, on long island and in, in new york and you did gymnastics too did gymnastics did from yeah. five to tw- five the age of five wow uh, my awesome. school my my uh elementary school 
yeah. had a gymnastics program because the coach was a co he he advocated to have it in his we were one of the only schools in in a, like it in our district, I know that because there were a lot of little schools that, you know, they go to the same junior high and then the same high school. Like, you know, they, there's like maybe five or six in the two towns that are connected. And he, we were the only one that had gymnastics. So, uh, yeah, I did it That's from five awesome. to 12. My sister took it all the way up to. to, to and, that, and, that, and that builds total flexibility, too, obviously. Right. As yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, again, it was something that I loved. Yeah. Uh, I, I was I, I could say now as a 47 year old, I, I was a quitter. I was, I didn't have the drive. Mm -hmm. I wish that I would have found jujitsu when I was younger, but I say, yeah. if I've been doing jujitsu from, from a young age. I probably would have quit that too. I might've quit that too. Plus the wear and tear on the body is, is pretty kind of crazy. I would have sure. like, as an adult, I know my limitations and I, okay, let's tapping early, making sure that I don't do something stupid that I know I'm going to put myself into a, you know, precarious a position. Tough spot. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, I did, you know, soccer was my game. Um, but I was really, really good at that. But then when I got to like ninth grade, I wanted to play, wanted to be cool and play football, drop yeah. soccer, played football. Wasn't any good at that. Yeah. And then I started working at about 16 and I was just like, you know, I was always been into making my own money and, and yeah. then I dropped everything. And, and then, you know, little martial arts here and there as a, as a teenager and, uh, but nothing, you know, more than, you know, a few months here and there until I was 41, I found jujitsu, but always, like you said, I always had a, bo a boxing bag as an yeah. adult. I always had a, a bag in the house, uh, those ever last stands with yeah. the speed on the back, <laughs> even though it sucks yeah. because it moves too much. But I always had a bag in the house uh, until recently. And we're actually, we're, we're in a, uh, we're, we're in a, a house right now, a townhouse because we're moving. We sold our home. We moved to another townhouse while the house is being built. Nice. Cannot wait to set up. Like my wife has yeah. given me the two car garage yes. it's for the podcast and it's going to be a gym. So that's awesome. Me. So, uh, so yeah, I can't wait to have a bag in the house again for her, for her too. So yeah, and she would love to have that in the house. So can't wait for those days to come back. But, but yeah, you know, I, I tried, uh, I dabbled in lots of different sports, but never really second is... wrestling. I wrestled for two years in junior high, which to this day, I'm using things that I remember from wrestling in my jujitsu. You know, the ground, yep. the, the game of grappling does it, it includes wrestling and yep. the more the wrestlers, as you know, probably with the USC yep. wrestlers, like a, like a Khabib, they're the most amazing, you know, yeah. ground fighters. Yeah. And they're amazing at jujitsu because they have it. They just have to learn how not to be scared to be on their back. I can work from my back, be on the ground and try to submit somebody. Okay. A wrestler is usually really, difference. really scared. They have to get, they have to lose that mindset. Yeah. And a kid that's been doing it since he was like five years old, maybe even younger till, you know, his twenties, he has to learn how not to be scared to be on his back. But that's also why it's good. Like a guy like Khabib is, is really good because if you can stay off your back. You can ground and pound and, and really, you know, be, uh, be dominant in, the, in that sport. Man, I hope he comes back. Uh, you know, I was watching some, uh, I was watching a few UFC programs today and uh, I guess Dana White's got a meeting with him. Uh, I think uh, while he's on fight Island, I think UFC yeah. 257 will be in fight Island, right? Yeah, so it is. He's yep. going to, he's going to be, uh, <laughs> he's going to be meeting with him and we're going to find out if anything, I, I hope he comes back. I, I'd like to see him get, you know, win number 30. Yeah, I do same get here. the whole, you know, he, lost, he just lost his dad. Oh, that had to be dad tough. was always in his corner. Now he's made a commitment to his mother not to fight. Yeah, that's going to be a rough one. You know, you make a commitment to mom. I let's, don't know. You, you're going back on your word with your mother, especially in that and his with his Muslim faith. Yeah, to, uh, to, to go back on your word uh, is uh, is, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a bigger deal a than, than your mom and my mom saying, honey, I don't want you to do it. But you look yeah. miserable. Go fight. Right. Yeah. Go, go do your thing. Again, you know, we talked to Jim about that on the show and I, you know, how does your family feel about you training? Uh, how have they felt about watching you in MMA and now in, in the bare knuckle fighting? And he says, every time I fight, my mother says, that's the last one, right? And he's like, well, I just won. I want to go. I'm going to go. Sure. Forward. I'm going to go further, mom. Right. But yeah, it, it's and, difficult and, and, to make and, a commitment and, like that. And they had that fight tagged as like best fight of the year I saw when I was watching it. I mean, I don't know because I haven't watched enough of them. Yeah. But shit, what I watched, holy crap, that was a yeah, pretty it's, good Yeah, it's fight. new to me still. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to, you know, catch a few clips here and there. Yeah. I, I think I, I'm at my... <laughs> I met my budget on buying new apps. So oh, dude, is that the me, truth or what? <laughs> I, I've reached my limit on on, on different apps. Uh, the jujitsu world has one called Flow Grappling. Okay, so you got yeah. to 
pay for the, it's like, it's some ridiculous amount. It's like yep. hundreds of dollars. If you, even if you pay for the year up front, uh, but, but I love it. It gives us content, uh, for the app and it's, I go to flow grappling. It's actually called flow. It used okay. to get started flow grappling, but they have like all of the weird sports. So you can see like every, like curling, wrestling matches, swim meets, like they do everything. A lot of, there's a, lot a of... huge community of jujitsu tournaments Yeah, and some specific ones that are like not uh, quote unquote televised on their app. So uh, yeah, there's a, there's a huge tournament system and an amateur, maybe you want to call them pro jujitsu guys yeah. that get like, you know, 10, $20,000 to come fight. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's that, that's a whole nother world. Cool. And yeah. I'm just learning even after seven years in, in the jujitsu world. Yeah. Um, you know, there's smaller tournaments that I've done and that people go to, but there are like these bigger organizations that do what we call like super fights match up, like, you know, you know, uh, competitors of, of obviously like similar weight and age. And, uh, yeah, the, the flow grappling is a, is a place that we get to get that content. I have that one, you know, I've got the Netflix and all that, you know, some of sure. the other stuff. Yeah. I'm at my limit. I cannot buy another freaking app just to watch some more fights. I'll, I watch the clips on YouTube now. I know. I try to do that. I've got, I got the bot. The, I don't know if you've heard of DAZN, the boxing app that a lot of them are on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, man. I was so pissed off this week because I bought the app for the year, which isn't bad. So it's $100 for the year or mm. you pay nineteen ninety nine a month. But then all the pay-per-views are free. Okay. Which is cool, right? So you got yeah. Canelo on there. You got Triple G. This Ryan Garcia kid who's coming up. I don't know if you've heard of him or not. Oh, yeah. He's a dude. Yeah. He's such a stud. And um, so make a long story short, I, we watched the Canelo fight. I paid paid for it. And so then this Garcia fight was coming up. And so I just went on to the, uh, to the app. And my computer uh, was, what, right before, uh, right before New Year's. So it was last a week ago today he fought. I couldn't get on. So DAZN does not have an 800 number. It does not have, it's a robot chat. If you, the phone number I found down in New York at the Trade Center is a bogus phone number. I'm like, how the hell can you be doing something like this? Yeah. So I didn't even get a chance to, so I paid for it. They couldn't fix my issue. They're still working on it. So I, I, I uh, did a little, you know, the Cody jailbreak thing. So I managed to get the fight, but how <laughs> yeah. irritating is, the, you know, yeah. Sites, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, um, how irritating, I was just so, I had to bring it up because it's still been on the top of my mind as we're talking about apps and everything. So I, I had that issue. I have, I have my pet peeves with the ESPN app, you know, I had, the Oh ESPN yeah. Plus, yeah. Right? Yep. Same when here. When I first started, yep. you know, look, it gets a little expensive. Sure. To buy $69 UFCs. Yeah. They don't really give you much of a break if you're on the app. Right. I, I th at least I'll get the fight nights. Yes. And the UFC, whatever's. Yeah, know, whatever the, the, the stuff to do. Stuff, you know? yep. And I had the app and then there are certain events that you have to have ESPN cable, right? You have to have cable, the uh, ESPN through cable in order yep. to watch even to. So, you know, we're in the, we've gotten rid of cable a long time ago. Everything yep. we watch is Hulu. A lot of people Netflix, have, you know, right. I think most people go that route. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm in a, the, the company I work for, it's a, you know, we're a tech company, uh, yep. you know, we do marketing and it's a lot of young people. So, you know, I hear about, okay, so I've just kind of followed their lead on what to buy. And anyway, my wife has Hulu, I had Netflix. So we have all that stuff. But when I got the app, you know, we don't have cable with ESPN. So like I missed a couple of fights where they were like, they're only on ESPN. Yep. Like, I don't know if it's the fight nights. Right. I get their primary but, station. You're right. Yeah. Yep. You know, so yep. I couldn't watch it. So I was like, screw you i'm like yeah. tweeting to dana white this sucks yeah. what are you guys yeah. doing <laughs> just like just like me <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, i'm like i'll show you yeah and i got rid of the app the big 4.99 i took out of uh took out of dana's pocket yeah and then i then i went back then i went back i'm like okay I, at least i get i didn't understand that i'm like you're telling me now what do i, I gotta get cable to watch everything i know so i thought i was getting everything so i went back on and and you know i i watched that that a lot and look i like their content i love the ufc same here i'm not an analyst by any means but i could talk i can hang oh yeah you can really give some good play by play yeah, yeah I, I love it it's uh it's really what got me to jujitsu you know was boxing with my you know uh Watching boxing with my dad. Yep. How old do you say you are? You're in your 50s, you said? I'm 57, yeah. So you yep. remember ABC Sports on Saturday and oh, Sunday? Oh, hell you know, yeah. The sports. Oh, it was the uh, best. Spent out in the parking lots in, in Vegas watching those boxers, Hagler, Hearns. Oh, the great. Those guys. Yep. I'm getting, I'm getting, I just gave myself chills Same just here. thinking about that. Some of yeah. the best, my, best memories of you know, my dad's 
you know, still alive, knock on yeah. wood. Some of my best memories with my dad. Same here. And you didn't even know it at the time with just those times watching those boxing matches and him explaining stuff to me. And, you know, I, I, I fell in love with boxing. And then at, when I found the UFC, I've got to say, I fell out of love. I fell out of love with boxing for two reasons. When I found the UFC, to me, it was like the flag football, of, yeah. you know, of MMA. Yeah. And then I so hate that Floyd Mayweather was picking and choosing his fights. Same. I lost the love. I, he's a great fighter. I take nothing away from him. Same. I don't really like him. I'm I don't either. Side. I don't and either. I don't, <laughs> what other sport? I, I say it this way. What other sport? Can you just pick your opponent? Yep. You know, you say you like hockey. You know, the Devils can't yeah. say, well, you know, I don't want to play. I'm going to probably get this wrong. I don't want to play the Penguins. You know, I don't know right. what divisions are, you know. Yeah, no, they're alive. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm, we're not no, I don't like to play the Penguins. I yeah. play, I'm going to play the Islanders next week. Yeah. There's no other sport that gets to do that. Not golf. Right. Not football. Not basketball. It just doesn't exist where you. No. there's this one-on-one. -on -one so him avoiding a lot of fights and waiting for guys like Manny Pacquiao to be out of their prime to fight. Yep. Eh, and then you're going to call yourself the best in the world. And, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, I've, I've never I, I been a fan my love of it for, yeah. with, 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 with Mayweather. I just wound up starting to say, you know what? I'd rather watch these guys give it their all than oh, you damn. run around the ring or a guy uh, away from a guy that you handpicked to fight. Right. And, and, and you and pay all that. Love. You let me, well, you pay all that money. And to your point, to me, it's always the best the best money can buy, right? The best bang mm -hmm. for the buck is what I'll get to. You're getting mm -hmm. a full flipping day of entertainment, right? Yeah. So even if you do the sixty four ninety nine, I guess he just went up to sixty nine ninety nine. But whatever it is, right? You guaranteed not Nine out of ten times out of the five fight cards, sometimes the, the main card is a dud. That like happens 12 all the time. Like 12 fights on, U, on a UFC you got, card. Right, you've got prelims yeah. going on all day, yeah. right? It's a, yeah, we, we do fight night here all the time, so my family comes over, my in-laws. We'll have the yeah. McGregor Poirier fight coming up in a couple weeks and you know, order some food, have some drinks, and it's just a kick-ass night of entertainment. We do the same. I used yeah. to do that with boxing, even in, you know, since yep. I've been in Florida we would uh, rotate from family house. Like it would be, my dad would have it one week, one fight, you know, the, the big fights, the big pay-per-views with boxing. And then again, I started to find UFC and I slowly got away from it. Yep. But that led me to jujitsu. I had never really, once I fell in love with UFC, you know, again, I had the bag in the house. I was teaching myself how to throw kicks and yeah. you know, uh, Mu Muay Thai kicks as opposed to the karate kicks and the Taekwondo kicks that I had learned when I was younger. And I just got just, Hey, Hold did you away. watch that fight last week? No, I was watching the UFC. Now, my father was so anti and they're laying on each other on the ground, hugging each other. Meanwhile, I'm like, Dad, that's jujitsu. That's that, you're, you're, right. That's what I do. <laughs> that's, yeah. and he's learning. He's kind of learning a little bit more. And now he, he'll call me and be like, did you see the fights last night? I'd be like, no, nah, I didn't get to catch him. He's like, what are you? Yeah. Hey, you got a jujitsu bucket. <laughs> you're not watching the UFC? And he's, yeah. you know, he's starting to, you know, he just he just likes that, that you know, the martial arts and boxing. Martial arts he just part loves of the it. sport. Yeah. Oh, it's so you know, great. The, the combat sport. So it's great that he's, you know, I get to share that with him a little bit now. And we have conversations. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's what led me to jujitsu. I, yeah, awesome. I got to do that ground. I got to do that. I can throw my hands. I feel comfortable hitting the bag. Uh, yeah. I went to a school that actually had a lot of schools when they're MMA gyms will have Monday, Wednesday, Friday is jujitsu. Okay. Gi jujitsu. So we have the kimono or the gi on. Yeah. Tuesday, Thursday is usually MMA. So it's a mix of you're doing no gi jujitsu. Usually it's two hours. So you do it's like two one hour classes, but no gi jujitsu. Yeah. And then you're doing MMA, which means we're going to mix the stand up with the jujitsu. Mix it. I miss okay. it. I love those days. That's, you know, yeah. literally, you know, uh, have our, our boxing gloves on in some cases, or, you know, we put on the, the smaller, usually a little bit thicker, but smaller gloves so we could still grapple and grab. Okay. But we would, you know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'd have that, uh, the, the MMA side. So here I am, I'm going like, yes, this is great. I've been in the bag at yeah. home. I've all these years of doing this. Now I get to use it here. And then having a Muay Thai coach, I, I yeah. mean, that's, that's what a lot of gyms do. The gym I'm at now, we're straight jujitsu and I'm okay. fine with that. I'm, I don't, uh, you know, 47 getting hit in the, in the face yeah. by a 25 year old every other day, you know, Melton, probably I'm kind of done with it. Yeah. Melton, how many days a week do you go in and train? Uh, I try to no less than three. Okay. If I can get four, uh, you know, I have a little bit of a slip disc in my lower back, so yeah. I need oh, yeah. a little bit of time. So now my schedule is usually I go on Wednesdays, okay, and then Saturday and Sunday are usually my training days. Now Saturday and Sunday are what we call open mats at my gym, 
So it's a lot of times we'll have other people. That's how I met Jim Ehlers. Uh, Allers, I think. Aller, I should say Allers. Allers, say his yep. name right. Yep. Jim Allers. Uh, you know, we have open mats. So that means other people from other gyms can come. Uh, usually, you know, you just sign a waiver, but, you know, either they know somebody or uh, maybe that we had a lot of kids home from college that train and then they're, you know, they'll come to the gym because they're just, their parents are local. Yeah. So um, I try to do those three days in between that though. It's, you know, kind of recovery like Monday. I have a, a chiropractor appointment every single Monday after go. the weekend, go get a little therapy, An get the back crack, yep. a little massage. And, uh, and I'm, and I'm good. Then Wednesdays again, get a little banged up. Uh, my school only does adults classes from Monday to Thursday. So they they don't do uh, evening classes on Friday, but then, you know, Saturday is usually uh, one hour. Sunday can be up to two hours. You could stay as long as you want, but it's usually up to two hours. So usually an hour on Saturday and an hour and a half on Sunday. So, but that's like, you're going in, we do a little bit of drilling or technique and yep. then it's almost all fighting. Wow. So it's six minute rounds. So you can have maybe like five, five or six, you know, six minute rounds. So that, you know, that's pretty tough. Think about with, with a rest of no more than one minute in between. Oh yeah. No kidding. So it, it gets tough and, and I love it. I love That's the part of it that I love. Absolutely. Yeah. You got it. Obviously a strong passion for it, which is awesome. So uh, yeah, man. keep it yeah. going. Right. Just keep, Thank you. Yeah, man. We, like it's, we never get old. You know, I'm 50. So I got, I've had a couple of surgeries done on me, but I say I will never regret anything I've ever done from a, from a, you know, Sometimes it's like, oh, you get any regrets? You know, I see, um, I don't know if you follow any, any, anything at all about bodybuilding, but Ronnie Coleman, I think he won eight I know who he is. Olympians, you know, right? He's that yeah. popular, obviously. Yeah. That guy, that poor guy can barely walk right now. But anytime you watch yeah. him, he's so positive and optimistic. He said, I wouldn't change a thing that I've done. And he, he had his whole, like his whole spine fused, his right? His whole spine. And so yeah. I had, so I had. I had a lower back surgery way back when they just lasered with the disc when you were talking about discs. Yeah. So I went in and got a micro discectomy back in 98. Um, and then a few years ago, not a few years ago, shit, we're 2021 now, right? 2013, yeah. I was losing motion in my hands. Um, I wasn't thinking straight, almost like, you know, sometimes you feel like you're get the flu, you're sick and you're dizzy and the equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, my discs pressing on my spine. So I had to go in and have that yeah. cervical discectomy, done, spinal yeah. surgery. It was in a damn neck brace for wow. whatever. Um, and I just caught it in time because, you know, any they said if you got hit by a car from behind or we went out to vacation, if it was boogie boarding out in California, whatever, this that one jolt, you know, it could paralyze mm -hmm. you, you know? Yeah. So, but, you know, sometimes my mom will say, oh, you all that working out you did, this and that. I said, Mom, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. I got a shitload of aches and pains now. It's cold in the mornings in Arizona, believe it or not. But So I like the warm weather. But, shit, man, I wouldn't change it for anything. I'm of the mindset, especially, you know, if you're happy in your life, which it sounds like you yeah. are. Yeah. If you would have changed one thing just one day in everything that you do, you might not be exactly here right now. You might not have met your wife. You might not have had your, your kids. I, I'm definitely of that mindset is like every mistake. I, I mean, I try to, and, and wasn't always like this. I'm, so I'm not going to talk like I'm yeah, Jay Shetty or, or <laughs> one of these, uh, you know, guys that talk about positivity, but yeah. I, I definitely, anything, any mistake I've made, anything that I've done good, bad, or indifferent has led me to this moment. And I'm very happy with my life. So, you know, I, I I'm, you know, just got married last year, you know, that's awesome. Jiu -jitsu. I've got this awesome podcast that's doing really well. Yep. And, and I should say this and not to, to one up, like I, we were talking about bats, and you asked me about how long, how much I trained. I used to train a lot more before I had a heart attack. Yeah. I actually had a heart attack after a training session. I saw that I, on your bio. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually wow. had a heart attack on a, I actually, I was training on a Friday night when we did have classes at night. I was training on a Friday night after work, had some chest pain, wasn't a big deal. Like it felt like somebody was sitting on my chest. I tell everybody, Heavy. felt like I had to poop. Felt like I yeah, just needed to yeah. go to the bathroom. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, whatever, I felt better after just a little while and woke up in the morning, went to my open mat training on Saturday morning, felt the same way, but a little bit worse. The pain was like going from elbow to elbow. It's not the old, like only left arm thing that everybody thinks that's just not true. Yeah, it was a cross. Uh, felt like, again, sides. somebody was sitting on my chest. Uh, and after that, I, I had to slow it down with jujitsu. Not only a lot of meds now, that mess yeah. with my cardio and my breathing. So, you know, I'd love to be going four to five times a week. It's just, I've now I recognize about the kind of, you know, sleep and recovery and what how you that need. helps me. Yep. You know, I've got, I'm looking across the room. I just bought an inversion board. 
Okay. Is that what it's called? A, one, an inversion table. Yep. I'm looking at it over yep. there. From so, uh, yeah, I want to see if that maybe helps with my lower back a little bit. Uh, just gives me a little room to, you know, maybe it opens it up a little bit. So, you know, talk to my chiropractor. Says, Listen, it's not going to hurt you. So maybe if it helps, we'll see if it helps. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, and I've got every recovery product, but that, that heart attack led me to just kind of taking a step back a little bit. I've, I've recently been getting a little bit more into lifting, using yeah. a lot of bands in the house because I don't have, a, you know, we just moved yeah. and we've got a lot of things packed yeah, up. Yeah, the so, bands are good. Yeah. Yeah, bands and uh, doing kind of like I've got some plates that I can grab onto. So using them like kettlebells. So just getting back into that again, which is nice. So I may only train jujitsu three days a week, but then now I'm getting back into the weight and I, I need to work on my cardio, but w- with the heart attack and the meds that you're on, yeah. your cardio goes from zero to 60 really quick. Yep. And it's, you have to get comfortable with it. Gotcha. I can do it. And it's funny because people look at me in the gym. My very first coach taught me Lamaze breathing for okay. catching my breath after a really hard roll. Wow. And I do that now. So sometimes people look at me like, are you okay? Cause you see, they see me breathing like that, but I'll just do what a woman does. This. Yeah. And I, it, it, it brings the heart rate down a lot more quickly. Those short it's inhale exhales, yeah. right? Wow. So, so just learning things like that. But it's one of the reasons why I do only train three days. I was doing even uh, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, but three gotcha. days in a row, Saturday through Monday is a little bit too yep. rough on yeah, but, how long um, now? How long ago was that, Milton? That that happened to you? This coming, I always know by June because my birthday's in June. June will be three years, so I guess we're right at like you know uh, two and a half years. And then did they have so, to go in and do bypass and? Uh, no, I out? got I have four stints though. They went four in and stints. Four, okay. four mesh stints, wow. right? They okay. go in through the uh, uh, through uh, the vein in your leg. Uh, they did uh, what they call it a catheter, right? So they go in, they yep. go into the heart, and uh, they basically. Get rid. I was a uh, uh, 80% blocked. Excuse me, 80% blocked wow. on my main artery, Damn. which I guess they call that the widow maker. If it, you know, the widow maker. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So they go in. They blow up these little bags that kind of remove the plaque. Yep. And then because that vein, again, this is how I understand it. I'm not a doctor by any yep. means, but because uh, that plaque was holding those veins open, they could actually collapse. And that's why you put the mesh stint in. Yep. So they told me, listen, you got another 50,000 miles on you. She's like, enjoy, do what you get back to normal, do what you do. I truth. hate taking all the meds that I have to take because yeah. I, I can feel, uh, especially with like a blood med, uh, you feel mentioned a like, getting, like uh, getting dizzy. You said you yep. were getting dizzy with your yep. back. That getting up quick, I can't do that. I have to be very... Uh, a lot of bad deliberate, easy. deliberate yeah, and when deliberate. I get up and just know to get up slow, uh, whenever I'm rolling in jujitsu, I'll always go to my knees for a little bit, catch myself. And then I'll get up like little things like that. I've just had to teach myself, yeah, yeah. but uh, I, I don't let it stop me. Can work I, around I, you know, it. Definitely. I, I, yeah. I definitely wish I could do a lot more cardio and I should be running more and things like that. Yeah. Again, with a jujitsu, one of the things I love about it is, especially as a bigger guy, I can control the pace. If I can get on top of somebody, now I can control the pace, smother, wait. I don't have to be at 100 miles an hour the entire time. Like, you know, you see the UFC, you see the punching and the takedowns, and I got him. Oh, I don't got him. And I, once I get on top of somebody, I am able to then control that pace. And maybe sometimes even if I'm on the bottom, again, I can hold them down. They might be holding me, but I'm, you know, I'm catching yep. my breath. I'm able to kind of, you know, control my game a little bit better yep. rather than being all over the place. So, um, you know, so yeah, it it hasn't stopped me. It, you know, it's it's changed the way that I live, the way that I eat, the way yeah, that I, I train. But it's not going to stop that, me from training. Oh man, that's and that's okay, right? You know, I've told yeah. that. You know, whoever has it. You know, my you know my parents are up there. So, uh, eighty. And my 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 dad just turned eighty one. My mom's about to turn eighty in February, but she just went in for a stint. But they both got you know put pacemakers in a couple of years ago. And oh, wow. what I would yeah. say is like. You know, you got to do what you got to do. But when it comes to the heart, you know, now you've got clean plumbing, as I like to yeah. say. Right? <laughs> I say I'm you good. Know, I say got, I got, they left some extra. They gave me some extra parts. I'm good. Got, I'm better you, than the average guy. <laughs> you got new parts, right? So, yeah. Now. Hey, you know what I want? So what I wanted to ask you, so uh, talking about jujitsu and, and, and MMA and everything else, I got hooked. I don't know. Did you get into that show Kingdom by any chance? I did not. The one with the, the one of the Jonas Brothers? Yeah. No, I did not. I'll um t- and you know what's funny though? So somebody like you that's actually doing the sport versus somebody like me who loves the sport, passion for watching it, but I'm not doing it. Somebody like you might watch and say, yeah, it's kind of like cheesy or whatever, but, um, and that, that happens. But I'll tell you, man, I really enjoyed the show. And one of my, one, I, I, I call him a B actor, Frank Grillo, Italian guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was even in some of the Avengers movies. Yeah. He does those movies. I, yeah. He just, he's, 
he's a cool guy. I don't know much about him other than what I see. I thought he did a great job, but I know he's he's heavy into the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I, uh, I'm not sure about jujitsu specifically. He may be. I just don't yeah. know of him in, yep. in my world. Yep. I do know that he had that. He did a show on Netflix for a little bit. I don't think it went too far where he was traveling around to boxing gyms. I watched uh, right? him over fight, around the world. It was called fight something, fight it was camp. Called, it was either fight camp or like fight club, something like that. You're right. Because yeah. I did watch a couple episodes. Yeah. I watched a couple of them. Yeah. Um, I didn't really take to it too much. Yeah, and somebody was, like you would see more through it than somebody yeah, like me. Yeah. On the, you know, I, I'll use currently everybody's watching Cobra Kai. Yes. You know, Cobra Kai, right? The, yep. the, uh, right? So yep. I, I watched, I watched all, I just finished season three. Uh, funny, uh, funny enough, my daughter got into it. Uh, my, uh, my 16 year old, she watched it. A friend, not by, I, I did, never suggested it to her. Didn't yeah. think she'd be into it. A friend suggested it. She fell in love with it. She just watched all three seasons as well. When I watch that, you, I have to take off the martial arts hat. I just yeah. have to sit there and enjoy it. Because take it for when what you it see is, him right? Throw a punch and it misses, and it's like a weak kick, and it. I want to enjoy it, so I try not to pick it apart. Yep. With the with the kingdom, I hadn't really heard about it until recently. I saw that it was on one of the streaming channels that we have. And I said, you know, maybe I'll give it a shot. I just haven't. Yep. So I'm probably going to give it a shot and watch it. I, but what you said is correct is if sometimes I watch that stuff and I'm just like, oh, you right. can't go from UFC, watch you two guys really pummel each other and then go watch that. And it's like, they're not, you know, they're not even touching. Yeah. I had that problem with, uh, there was one of the Netflix, uh, that, uh, one of the Marvel Netflix shows I forget. It, it was the, the black superhero. I forget his name. Oh, yeah. Um, um, uh, black Panther? I, I, no, no. It I'm was like a big oh, dude. Oh, on Marvel. He, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was only on Netflix. It wasn't a movie. And I was the first season I watched it, my, my barber put me onto it. <laughs> and ev the fight scenes were like so, uh, like literally you could see him missing, yeah. throwing a punch. And I just couldn't watch it. Yeah. I couldn't get through it. And, and I, you know, so... And maybe I overanalyze it. That one just really, I thought was really yeah, bad. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I, I, I got to, I, I guess, you know, like, uh, 30 years ago, Karate Kid came out. I mean, that was part of my childhood. Yeah. So seeing I, it now and seeing those, I, those same people, it's, it's kind of fun. I, and I watched it as well, the movies. I've got to get into Cobra Kai because I haven't started yet and I've seen it all, uh, all uh, over. So, buddy of mine said, so I'm going to, I'm going to get, uh, start watching that. I do think if you started funny, if you ever do watch it, shoot me an email. I'd like to know just what you think about it. Yeah. It, it seemed <laughs> to me, it seemed a little more closer to reality and okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't glamorized, right? Yeah. Um, tough upbringing, etc. As a matter of fact, one of the other stars in the show, he's in from Boston. He was do he just doing that show. I think it was City on a Hill. But anyways, he's actually practices and is friends with a lot of UFC guys. Michael Bisping yeah. okay. trains with yeah. and a couple of other guys. But um, and they've had like Forrest Griffith on the show and a few other UFC fighters. So I think there's that connectivity there because they're not trying to be act they actually do it not like frank grillo isn't going to yeah. the ring and actually fighting people for you know as a as a uh, pro you, but he brings something to this to the to the role just me yeah you you uh I, I forget they call him like something big dad big joe daddy something like that joe yeah so joe joe daddy stevenson yes he's the i don't know if he's is he on the show but he's on he's on, he's on like, I can't remember what season. Consultant that. on the show. Consultant, and he's in a couple of episodes. Yeah, I think he's. I, forgot, in, I think I it's Joe Stevenson. They call him, I think he's got like five kids, and that, that's where the daddy came from. So Joe Big Daddy Stevenson. Oh, uh, okay. He was. A, yeah, he was a beast in, in the UFC. Oh, he was great. And that's probably that. We're going back years now. Again, hadn't watched it, but I remember them talking to him, and he was like a technical consultant. But I guess yep. I think he was also like a training partner on the show. He was. So. Uh, yeah, well, I, you I motivated me. To, I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna yeah. look. At, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look into it and, and and watch it. I had to bring that up to you. I I think you'll like it. I, I really do. Yeah. But we'll we'll see. Well, let's uh as we kind of wind things down um and wrapping things up. Just been a great conversation, by the way. Really great. enjoyed Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. Um, let's talk a little bit about your foundations and what you're doing yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. So we go. We talked a little bit about. I was pointing at the logos behind yeah. me. Those we defy logos at the top. Uh, originally, we started the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies Foundation as a, an organization that was going to do one-year scholarships to veterans, first responders, and children. 
and, you know, people that are doing cool stuff, people in need, you know, we were, we get to decide it on this end, who's going to get that. When I found out about one organization called Mission 22, and then I found out that one of my co-hosts, because there's usually like a, uh, at least three of us on most yep. episodes, yep. because of COVID, I've gone to an interview style like this a little bit. Yeah, I but love it. it for, yeah. we, started, we actually started with five people sitting around talking by, about jiu-jitsu, uh, practitioners at all levels. Yeah. Well, it turns out my co-host, he was not only an, an ambassador for Mission 22, we had a listener that asked us to give him a shout out from through our Patreon, said, hey, I want to buy this shout out, but give it to them. And then we found the We Defy Foundation. And We Defy, they do the scholarships to combat veterans. Okay. We had started the foundation. I became an ambassador and I said, you know what? I don't want to step on any toes. Let me, let's just do the scholarships for kids. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of a, a part of that too was, and I'm, and I'm regretting it a little bit, and this will come full circle, is a lot of the pr police brutality things that started to come out. Yep. I'm the son of a cop. I'm the, I, am, I was raised by uh, an NYP. He was actually, uh, it was NYP, N, uh, NYTPD. So it was New York City Transit Police okay. before they merged. There used to be two departments. So then they merged Separate. and it's all NYPD. So he was a transit officer. So I'm the son of a cop. Yeah. Utmost respect. Tried to become a cop. Took the test. Yeah. Walked away from uh, from my list in New York when I moved to Florida. Like I, that's what I wanted to do. So I have yeah. the utmost respect. And again, I regret the decision of saying let's just go with kids, and we'll we'll support. It, it was good to support the We Defy Foundation and still do, but it was like first responders. Just you know, cops are just so much going wrong right now. It's going to be very difficult to run an organization that's supporting them right now. I, I regret that. that. Yeah. I regret that decision. We're actually yeah. coming back and we're going to be doing all three of those again this year. Oh, that's good. Uh, that's we've good awarded two scholarships. So again, you know, we're just kids that have done some cool, spectacular things. Yeah. Uh, our first, you'll, you'll know this when I say it, the little boy that got bit in the face protecting his sister. His yeah. name is Bridget Walker. Did you see that? He's yes. our first one. Oh, no he, kidding. And he and his family, his father and his brother, uh, they all, I think his sister too, all do jujitsu. Wow. They did jujitsu before the attack. They, it was, they didn't start after. They didn't start because of us. Yeah. But when we, found, we were raising money, and when we found out that he did jujitsu, he was the obvious choice to be our first scholarship winner. Reached out to his dad. The rest is history. So we pay for one year. We are paying for his jujitsu uh, jiu lessons. Send him stuff. We send him stuff from our sponsors. We send him stuff with uh, our jujitsu dummies logo, rash guards, and different things like that. Yeah. Uh, so the second winner... And I've got her, I just met her parents the other day. Um, she is uh, a little girl named Gemma Fiorenza. And she, uh, what was spectacular about her, not only was she just a cool little kick-ass girl doing training yeah. jiu-jitsu and now doing MMA, she also raises money through an organization called Tap Cancer Out to, su you know, to support cancer research, but because of her mom. Her mom is battling colon cancer. So, oh, wow. uh, and I got, again, I got to meet her mom the other day. They were in South Florida. So we got to meet, they gave me this really cool, no ex hashtag, no excuses. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sam strong bracelet. That, so I wanted to special. make sure yeah. I wear it today. So we, she tap cancer out another really cool organization. I had the, uh, the founder on, they basically run a tournament system for jujitsu and you can, you, every tournament system you pay like probably a hundred bucks and then yeah. you get to. You're in a tournament. That's you get your entry to fight fee. Three or yeah. four times. Yeah, it's your entry. Yep. yep. So, um, Tap Cancer Out lets you raise money for them. You start a page, you raise money for them within their platform, kind of like a GoFundMe, but they use something called classy.org. And they raised money. She raised money. And then she'd get to do their tournaments for free. And they give you, like, okay, if you raise a certain amount, you get your fee, maybe a t shirt, a backpack, things like that. Yeah. So, she was a, uh, she was a listener. She had, you know, kind of, you know, said hello online. I think her father really handles her social media, but, you know, with her, takes pictures, puts her on. So we started a conversation and they were a supporter of the show and it was great. I sent her some rash cards. And then down the line after Bridger, we awarded that second scholarship. Now, once we really got to know her story and, yeah. you know, you, really a little kid is, she's trying to start a, a, a line of clothing to support cancer research. She's doing the wow. tap cancer. I was like, this is just amazing. That is amazing. So, so yeah. we, we, those are our two current sponsored jujitsu practitioners. And this year, this month, we're going to relaunch our GoFundMe. Uh, we can, people can donate on our Instagram. Um, and right through Instagram now, you can do the, you can actually donate without leaving the platform. So you can, because yep. now they, uh, once you get approved on Facebook, Facebook owns Instagram. So you can actually add that, don that donate button to your page. 
Gotcha. So on our foundation page, which you can find from our regular page at Jiu-Jitsu Dummies. Okay. You can go through, click on the link in our bio. It gives you the link tree of all our stuff. And then you can pop over to our, our foundation page uh, and, and you can donate. So we are going to go back to, I, I believe we're like 99.9% .9 sure that we're going to also now go back to including veterans and first responders. Basically, look, we want to give jujitsu scholarships to spectacular people. Yes. People who do good things. Somebody who wants to try jujitsu. They don't need to be a practitioner. Somebody who might want to get into jujitsu. Uh, I've seen, we've all seen videos of an officer getting their butt beat, you know, getting yeah. their ass kicked. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we want to get them a scholarship and show them the benefits of knowing jujitsu, not to beat up somebody, but to be able to protect themselves. Protect. So get arrest properly, things like that. There are jujitsu schools that teach those things. So we're going to go back to that model of kids veterans and first responders and really i don't think there's a, there's nothing stopping us from really you know giving a scholarship to anybody who that, that, that covers a lot of people yeah it does yeah anybody good doing group anything of people. spectacular who could benefit yeah. we've seen kids getting bullied you know uh there's a uh, if huh. uh, people who know jujitsu they're the gracie brothers out in in california the yep. gracie university is yes. an online platform but yep. they are like at the one of the main gracie locations yep. they do a lot of that they bring in like bullied kids they see a video online they'll bring in that bully kid and their family and and put them through a week of training and then find them a school in their area. You know, we, we, we want to do things like that. It's about spreading the word of jujitsu. I know that not only the health, but the mental benefits and, and that those benefits go from kid to adult. Yeah. So we're just going to keep on doing that. And uh, again, we're going to change our, our platform a bit in that we're going to, you know, include those, what was originally part of our, uh, you know, kind of uh, our founding uh, mantra, which was, or, you know, our founding, what's the word? Uh, uh, the word on it escapes me to say, but like, you know, we originally, that was going to be our structure yeah. was Original. Yep. we were going to do all that. So, so we're going to go Great back foundation. to that. So yeah. I'm, excited, I'm excited to do that. And uh, just, you know, again, that's, just, it's all about spreading the word and, and I love to do it. That's awesome. Yeah. I was check I was just looking at my notes cause I had jotted something down too. Um, and I'm like, Oh God, I can't read my own handwriting anymore. Ricks and Gracie is where Grillo was training. Yes. Yes. I was so, taking some notes. So yes. Yeah. So uh, the the R's are H's in 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 Portuguese. So it, it hicks in. I, I I if I didn't yeah. correct, you, I'd, I'd get some flack from my yeah, people. Yeah. 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 Right. Hicks and Gracie. Hicks. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you yeah. for that too. That's <laughs> great. Hicks and yeah. Gracie. That's like Royce Gracie. Roy, right. Royce Gracie. Right. One of the first guys. Right. Yes. It's, Roy, it's Royce. It's a, you know they all have. Wow. I had no idea, but yeah. I'm very familiar with them, of yeah. course. Yeah. Hicks wow. and Gracie is uh you know Hicks and Gracie was uh, an MMA star before we knew what MMA stars were here in the U S he, yeah. he, he did it over in Japan and in, in some of those different organizations, he was a yep. champion in those organizations. And when the UFC came to the United States, there was a choice to make on who they wanted to be in that first tournament. And they chose Hoist. There's some like political family stuff that, that was going on and there was money. He Hicks and Gracie was the best representative of Gracie Jiu Jitsu because he was doing MMA in Japan, he was a champ. He was a champ in one of the organizations. Well, they put Hoist in because Hoist was a more, you know, uh, skinnier. He wasn't an MMA, an MMA fighter. Okay. He was a more of an average Joe. Hickson was a pro. He was already yeah. a pro in another organization. So they put in in Hoist. Now, again, in our community, they say, well, it was a money thing, and was anybody going to get paid? And and uh, who owned the organ? One of the brothers owned the UFC. You know, so it was, it was all this drama. At the end of the day, Hoist Gracie was a great representative of jiu-jitsu, and he won that first tournament and, and a few others after that. He was he was he looked like an average Joe. He was tall, but he was an average guy. He was a skinny guy. He was weighed a lot less than most of the other guys he was fighting, yeah. and he won the entire tournament. So, oh, yeah, wow. so, uh, so Grillo fighting with, with, with Hicks and Gracie, you know, that's that whole tie in there, but Hicks and Gracie was – was an MMA star before Tito Ortiz, before any of the big names that you know now, before St. Pierre, before BJ Penn. He was doing this before the UFC yeah. here. Uh, wow. It's just been much bigger. You know, MMA has been, is, was, and probably is just as big within the Asian, you know, countries, yep, yep. And J Japan specifically. You know, there's a, the one championship now is a huge organization. They have a, a big piece of what UFC has here in the States and worldwide. That, but uh, Hicks and Gracie was doing that before anybody was doing it here. That's amazing. Yeah, funny. Tito, assistant mayor now in Huntington Beach. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. I didn't look too far into it. But, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. He, you know, he's always, you know, 
He's out there, he's out right? There. In terms yeah, of he's, he's been, he's been out there. You know that, so yeah, uh, always yeah, a colorful person. But um, yeah, there's a few. Listen, of them, as I, you know. I give him, I give him credit, just I, like I say, give credit to people getting on that. I, I do too. If you want to make yeah. some change and you want to change and you're getting out there and trying, I there's have to take my hat off to you, whether I agree with you or not. So I, true. Hats off to him for getting out there. Isn't that the truth? You know, you can do all the talking behind a mic or in a press conference, whatever athletes you are, but when you yeah. take an action and being involved. That's powerful, yeah. right? No matter what yeah. side to your point. I, I mean, I try. I, I'm trying to live by that with the with what we're doing with the foundation. Yeah. You know, it's. Uh, I love talking about jujitsu. I love doing jujitsu, and I'm putting my money where my mouth is by supporting other people to find jujitsu. I'm not just telling people to do it. I'm saying you want to do it. We're going to pay for it. Or if you're doing it now, let me help you pay for it. So, uh, yeah. I, uh, and I see that. I like I said. I've watched. I watched uh, some of the the show you did with Allers and few of your other shows and honestly just not saying it. i mean you fantastic job i like your format you thank can you. just tell the passion for what you do thank you, thank um, you very and much. so and that is before we wrap it up is that jujitsu for dummies.com somebody would it's go not to? for dummies we got to be careful with that okay all right i'm sorry so it's just it's just that the uh, oh so the podcast I gotcha. is jujitsu dummies, Dumb, no, jiu-jitsu the, dummies. i'm sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> no no, no. I, listen I, I get it every once in a while yeah, so that, yeah. I chose to name it Jiu-Jitsu Dummies. It was supposed to be Jiu-Jitsu Idiots, but I thought that was a little too no, strong. No, and I do like the name, though. Seriously. I wanted I it to be sure self-deprecating. Right. Yeah. And then the foundation is the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies Foundation. The only thing different Perfect. on our logo is a podcast on the on the bottom is covered by foundation, and we added the the, but it's the same logo. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah, so uh, you can find us. If you just go to at Jiu-Jitsu Dummies is the easiest place to go. That's our main. That's our Instagram Perfect. If you hit the link tree, you'll see everything that we do, all of the places where you can donate, all of our properties, website, YouTube, and all that stuff. So uh, that's where you can find us. Awesome. Love it. Hey, thanks for joining us. It's been a, I've had a great time. I don't know about Thank you. you man. So Thank really you. I appreciate really, it. I love doing this, man. Really enjoyed it. Living. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I do too. And so uh, maybe sometime down the road, we'll uh, big UFC card. Maybe I'll reach out to you if you want to come back on and we'll talk through a card or something. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I would love to do that. Yeah, in the meantime, stay safe, keep going, and much success to you, Milton. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Take care. All right, and so there you go. So I really enjoyed that last uh, hour and 10, 15 minutes with Milton and uh, actually learned a lot, which was was really cool too. So So with that, with that all being said, guys, as we wrap up this week's show, again, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, stay mentally strong, more important, more importantly. Uh, we will get through this uh, most definitely. And when things kind of, as I said, at the uh, at the outset of the show, things make the flip over. Let's uh, let's hope and pray that uh, we're moving into a better year. I feel very confident that we will, but we all need to stay positive and mentally strong to get through it. Next week's show right now, um, I have scheduled for next week's show, Aaron Sean Harper, former NFL player and NFL speaker, still trying to button down the time. I know he was getting back from vacation, so I just want to secure the time, but he is expected to be on next week's show. Uh, and then we've got um, Gino Payne from the Game of Thrones, Joe Lozada, uh, coming on to us to uh, talk a little bit about wrestling uh, and Alabama sports here in a few weeks. So we've got a good lineup of guests. So with that, everyone... Peace, love, God bless, stay safe. We will talk to you all next week.